How to handle squalls. Here's some tips. Sailing. Virgins. Yeah. Hi, I'm James. And I'm Rupert. We're Sailing Virgins. We're here in Nanny Key. This is our base in the BVI where we start and finish our weeks. Best marina in the BVI. Yeah, we love it. And so we thought we'd give you some tips on how to handle squalls. If you are prepared for squalls and if you know what they look like and are ready for it, then no problem at all. So listen up for some tips. Yeah. So let's talk about squalls. We've managed to break them down into five points. Number one, what is a squall? How to spot a squall? How to avoid a squall? Preparing for the squall? And then what to do once a squall hits? So let's go. The definition of a squall is a sudden violent gust of wind or a localized storm, especially one bringing rain, snow, or sleet. In our instance, of course, it's big wind that brings rain. But in reality, it's a big gray wall of misery where the shit is gonna hit the fan and you're gonna have to sit it out for 10 to 30 minutes. Sometimes you have a minute to prepare. Sometimes with any luck, you've got 10 minutes to prepare. Yeah! The first sign is large cumulonimbus clouds. Sometimes within clouds, you can see this thing called verga. Virga is basically rain that doesn't touch the ground. It evaporates before it hits the ground, and that can create some turbulence, which can usually sort of goes hand in hand with squalls. A rather late sign, which could be quite daunting if you're leaving it until this point, is the squall line approaching on the water surface. Rain sometimes follows a squall, but sometimes it's in front of a squall. So if it's raining, then that might mean there's a squall on the way. And the last point is radar. If you're fortunate enough to have radar on your vessel, you can often see the clouds coming closer and closer and monitor their progress towards you. You can actually get around these just like the, another vessel that you're on a collision course with. Yeah, so in, in the Caribbean, sometimes it's really distinct. You can see a cell, a squall cell, like in front of you, and you can either slow the boat down or you can um, change the course of the boat so you avoid it. Um, and there's been occasions where we've sort of dodged between cells and it's kind of a game of how not to get wet. Uh, so yeah, sometimes you can just sail around them. And point one of this is on your deck vest. Get your life jackets ready and even wear harnesses looking on, judging by the aggressiveness of the school. Number two is you want to have foul weather gear at hand. You might want to put it on, even if it's a beautiful sunny day. The thing about foul weather gear is if you're going to have a squall and it's going to be cold rain, even in the Caribbean, for sort of 10, 15 minutes, you're going to get cold. So you might want to actually put the gear on, even though it seems like overkill, and um, be prepared for it. It's nice to check that all that foul weather gear still fits as well. Uh, number three is secure the boat. You want to make sure that there's nothing which is going to break below deck. You're most likely to intensify your level of heel considerably. So make sure everything's away. Double check those port hatches and make sure those washboards are stowed. Number four is plotting your position. You want to um, go down, write in the ship's log um, what, what the position is, lat and long, just in case you lose all the electronics. If you get a, um, a strike and, um, and your electronics go down or something like that, then you'll at least know where you were at a certain point in time. Always best to go downstairs and do a last minute log. Determine where nearby hazards and safe water lie. So if the school does go on longer than your expected 10 to 30 minutes, make sure that you know of a bay or a place of shelter where you can go get refuge uh, to sit it out until, until it finishes and you can carry on with your course. Yeah. And number six is shorten sail. So this is when you want to reef. Reefing is hugely important as a preparation and this may be the most important thing to do, arguably. Um, and you want to really reef uh, conservatively. So um, get the third reef on the main, even if you think, you know, maybe you can get away with a second, put the third reef on. You can leave your jib out until the wind really starts um, coming in because it's easier to reef the jib. But with the main, be conservative. You know, it's going to be a bigger process to, uh, to put the main, uh, shorten the main, so do it early. And the final one is if time, head for a port. 
Now, this is quite a risky option because the worst place you want to be is almost in a port or at that halfway point. If you can guarantee yourself space in the marina and secure yourself a spot, then that's great. Uh, it might be a good option if, you're, if you've got nervous passengers on board. Yeah, so in, in that sense also, you want to make sure you don't have a leash or um, if, you're, if you're looking to head into a port or at least having that as an option, just make sure you don't have a leash or you don't want something to fail and then all of a sudden you're being washed against the rocks. So they're the preparation uh, tips we have for you. Okay, so point number five is what to do when the squall hits. And the first one is if you can allow it with your course, like with any strong winds or big seas, try and see if you can roll with the punches. That means going downwind, you're surfing down the waves and the wind is coming from behind you, keeping that apparent as low as possible. And that can be difficult, but it's usually the best way to go. We say go with the blow, so go with the wind. Point number two is determine if you want to use the motor or not. Um, the squall usually has plenty enough wind for you to be, to be able to sail through it, but sometimes um, your motor is uh, helpful. So I would say just don't be holy, don't be purist either way. If you need the motor, use it. Uh, if you don't need it, then sail. Just watch out for any lines which may have been blown overboard by the last minute aggressive healing. Yeah. Which brings me on to our third point, which is helm aggressively. Be prepared for the weather helm or knee helm to pick up dramatically. Make sure you've got someone on the helm who is able to deal with the aggressive change and increase in wind. And fourth point is keep cool. Uh, it's, if you're sort of well prepared and everyone knows what's going on, then squalls can actually be pretty exciting, pretty fun to sail in, um, especially because they're so short and intense. So if you've got the boat set up, everyone's good about it, you get smashed with wind and water, it can actually be um, a really thrilling part of the cell. So just keep, keep your cool and uh, you'll, have, you'll be fine. Yeah. Okay, so there we have it, how to handle squalls. Basically, if you can spot them and you can prep the boat for them, then they're not a problem. Yeah, don't be worried about them at all. It's a good opportunity to practice your reefing, always over reef and yeah don't be scared a lot of aggressive sailing teams always head for the schools and use them for their additional wind and power to progress through yeah so we really hope you enjoyed the tutorial part of this episode if you did please thumbs up please subscribe we also have a patreon channel and um, we have once a month uh, free q a live q a sessions with myself and some of the instructors so please uh, yeah feel free to take us up on that we really appreciate it and now we're going to have a look at Kane garden bay so Cane Garden Bay in Tortola is our home. It's where our crew house is based. Um, it's this beautiful beach with a great sunset and some great restaurants and pubs and that sort of thing, or bars. So uh, yeah, we hope you enjoy this little look at Cane Garden. Thank you. Yeah. Sailing Virgin